Welcome to Champlain Park High School for Northwest Suburban Conference Volleyball. It's an all District 11 matchup tonight. The Blaine Bengals and the Champlain Park Rebels. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Fong Long and uh, certainly for Champlain Park, looking like early anyway, one of the better teams in the state. They did well in the Marshall Tournament against some really good competition and Right now, they're just trying to prove that they belong right up there near the top. Well, I certainly, if you go by rankings, they certainly belong right up there. Coming in as a number three team in the state here in the big schools. And they did a great job down in Marshall. Probably considered the toughest tournament of the year and throughout the state here. I believe they went three and one or four and one down there and beat some really tough teams. And I think uh, Coach John Yunker certainly has one of the better teams that he's had in this history that he's been here. And for Blaine, they haven't been tested quite as much yet. They are 4-0 to start the year, and they like what they've seen and looking to try and come in and maybe pull off an upset here tonight. Well, if the energy that we got off of talking to the coach there uh, is any indication, they certainly are on the way to success. And uh, she loves how they're playing. They're 4-0. You couldn't ask for a better start. But tonight's going to be a true test for them. And the coach is actually excited to see where they stand against one of the better teams in the state. And Natalie Thines, the second-year Blaine coach, was an assistant here at Champlain Park and several years back was a player here at Champlain Park. She kind of downplayed a little, but you know it's got to mean a lot to her to come into this gym and try and get a win, too. And don't, don't forget, she also teaches in this district. And so, yes, she does. I think it definitely has a little special meaning to her. But on the other hand, she does have to remember that she's at Blaine now and that she's preparing for her team for a very different section. But she brings a wealth of experience from her, her days at Champa Park, both as a player and as a coach, that I think is only going to translate into a lot of a success for Blaine. Been a lot of action this week for both of these teams, too, if, especially if you include the weekend tournament for Champlain Park. And I think it's a little bit of a lesson, too, how you have to be up for each match each night. You can't just you know get all excited for the one opponent and not be ready for the next well it's especially tough for someone like champion park because they are the prohibitive favorite in almost every match they're going into being the third ranked team in the state but they have to play their game they can't worry about who they're playing that night they have to play their game if they do it will take care of itself and they'll come out on the successful side of it all right we'll see who wins this one here tonight blaine looking to stay undefeated champlain park looking to take care of business on their home court the Bengals and the Rebels, it's next here on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. And welcome back. A nice crowd on hand for this one as the Bengals make the journey over here to Champlain Park to take on the Rebels midweek match and as we said both have already played this week Champlain Park uh, coach Junker said wasn't their best match Tuesday night but Roseville's a good team it's a good win they got a, a four set victory there and uh, even though they played a little bit slow but it's a good learning experience you look at the starting lineups for these two teams with Blaine on the left side there Natalie Schmitz who was injured last year but uh, one of their key players this year is a senior, along with Ileana Schmitz, Brown, Hansen, Kappas. Their setter is Thormitzgaard, and Tau is their libero. And for Champlain Park and Coach John Yonker, Marley Hansen, Lily Reese, Claire Caswell, Carly Gilk, Ellie Schmidt, Allison Kopp, the setter, Sarah Molberg is the libero for Champlain Park. And uh, Coach Yonker telling us that We'll still experiment with lineups. He's, <laughs> he's kind of known for that throughout the years. And, uh, you know, that there, he's always wanted to tweak things, see if maybe this fits it a little better. And it, so it's not necessarily everything set in stone for even tonight or throughout the rest of the season. Well, one thing's for sure is that Coach Yunker is always going to try to put the best six players in that court. And he's not afraid to mix it up regardless of when in the season. But by this point in the season, he's starting to get a good idea as to which one of his players are going to be the main players that he's going to utilize and which ones are the role players here. But nevertheless, he's still going to continue to tinker with it, if you will, and, and find out who's and go, sometimes just go with a hot hand. 
Thought it was interesting we talked to, of course, they are still in the same section with YZ, who are ranked number one. And based on what we saw a couple weeks back, deservedly ranked number one. They blew through that Marshall tournament pretty well. And, and uh, Champlain Park, though, right now, they're fighting the urge to be thinking about why is that already. They know they got a lot of season to go through to get to the possibility of playing them. Well, they've certainly have shaped their schedule in the early season, at least the first half, against some very, very tough opponents. Of the 10 games they've played, five of them are against ranked opponents, you know, including the number one team in 3A, Marshall, you know, Jefferson, Bloomington, Jefferson, East Ridge. So they've certainly packed their schedule to get ready to make that run. And yes, they do have, while they have one eye on Wyzetta, they do have to take care of business today and the rest of the way, especially as now they get in that meaty part of that conference play. And we were kind of marveling at the freshman talent that this Champlain Park program has. They're a really good team this year, but you get the feeling they might still continue to be for the next few years as well. Um, if there's any, you know, the one trademark of Champlain is that they never just rebuild, they always reload. And this is a certainly one of the, the years uh, very you know, evident by three freshmen they use in a regular rotation here, including a setter. And frankly, right now, their go-to offensive player they are certainly in good hands for the future. It's been a good rivalry in volleyball, although I think it's fair to say in recent years, Champlain Park's kind of dominated, but certainly both of these have had pretty good volleyball histories and everything too. So it's, you know, one of those that you sort of circle on the calendar as a rival throughout the, the times coming up as younger players. And then of course on the varsity court. Yeah, there seems to be a, a nice, healthy rivalry between these two, both from very successful programs. I think both programs have made the state at various times here. And so Champlain Park has gotten the better end of it the last several years here. But as you can see, and as we're going to see tonight, I think Blaine is definitely a resurgent program. Coach uh, Thines has them 4-0 um, so far this season and in a very good path uh, to be successful this, the rest of the season. Claire Caswell will serve first year for Champlain Park. And we are underway as Caswell puts it in play. Bengals get a swing here and it's hammered home by Clara Brown for Blaine as they will take a one nothing lead. It's a good start for Blaine with a nice good pass off that serve receive and executed really well by the setter and the, and the attacker to finish that point. Eliana Schmitz here to serve now for the Bengals. Nice dig there. And roll shot to the middle by Schmitz. And a misfire on the left side there from Marley Hansen. So the Bengals get the first two. Schmitz serving it up here for Blaine. They go right side this time and hammered home by Hansen. So give her another opportunity after the misfire a moment ago and the Rebels on the board. That was definitely a nice recovery by Marley Hansen there. Started off with a nice pass, but then she found a little seam down, down that line and took advantage of it. Hansen, the junior, serving here for Champlain Park. Lane looking middle, but denied. Nice block, Lily Reese getting up to get most of that one, I think, for Champlain Park, and we're at two to two. As I see, Champlain Park just rotated their uh, their stud fr uh, front row player, Carly Gilk, here. So watch out for her. She's definitely their offensive star so far. She leads the team with 108 attacks and definitely has a bright future as a freshman. Dug up there nicely by Moberg, and rolled to the middle and put away by Lily Reese. Boy, that started with the dig there. I thought that ball might be going down, but Champlain Park able to play solid defense there. Excellent defense and dig by that libero to save that point. And this time hammered home by Natalie Schmitz. You can see why they're happy to have her back this year after missing last year, getting injured real early. 
Well, she, we watched her in warm-ups, and she was very impressive uh, in terms of being able to attack that ball, and her size is going to present problems tonight for Champlain Park. Overpass there and put away by Brown. Not much that uh, Cop could do with that ball and just had to play it over and left a relatively easy chance here for the Bengals. So they go up 4-3 early on. And I like what, when uh, we asked Coach Thines about, you know, what's her team's mentality coming in. She said, yeah, they're excited to try and win this one. Not, not like afraid to face mighty Champlain Park or anything like that. Yes, definitely on paper, Champlain Park is the favorite here, but I really also liked how Coach Thines answered it. And these players right now, if we played eight points, they aren't coming out with any fear or trepidations against playing Champlain Park. Here's Gilt getting her first swing, the super talented freshman left-hander and coach Yunker said this will be a, a, a power five conference college player our next one he said after had a couple of Wisconsin recruits of course with Izzy Ashburn and and Sydney Hilly. You can already see that her skills are well developed and mature for just even a freshman right now that's why she's going to be a very heavily recruited player if, she, if it already hasn't started. She's got the size she's got the arm swing and she definitely has the skills. Natalie Schmitz took her eye off that one a little bit and ends up into the net. Five to five here as Axness serving here for Champlin Park. Free ball chance here for the Rebels. The block will go wide, so score it for Addison Kapitsky. You know, credit to Axis there for a very aggressive serve that took Blaine out of system. They weren't able to convert on the serve receive. It basically gave a free ball to Champion Park that they took advantage of. That'll be good down the line. Nice placement by Clara Brown for the Bengals. So they kind of stem the rally a little bit there and even things back up at six. Yeah, impressive vision down that line. Seeing that little seam, seeing that, that they're giving their line and taking advantage of that. Guzzi serving there, Angela Guzzi for Blaine. And that one stuck through the block by Natalie Schmitz. Gil thought she was gonna be able to dig that ball up after uh, touching on that block. The ball came down a little too fast for her to save. And it's an ace for Guzzi. Gilk had a tough time receiving that ball because it just dropped right after it crossed that net. I mean, it certainly wasn't where she anticipated the ball was going to be. Pushed over as they served at Gilk again there. Working the slide to the outside and put away by Jillian Hansen as Axness that time didn't really get her platform under that one very well. You know, for being the underdogs, I don't see any nerves so far in Champion, or in, excuse me, in Blaine right now. They executed a really nice slide to the middle and found that and, and tested the uh, right back player. Guzzi with a service error finally there to give Champlain Park a point, so they pull within 9 7. And Moberg will serve here. Ooh, tough serve there. Guzzi gets to it. And Schmitz, a strong swing, but dug, dug up by Moberg. Gilk, and that ball's good. Just barely put it in, cross court, deep corner. Really good patience by Gilk to stay back on this ball. It wasn't set on that net. It was actually back a little bit, as you can see. She waited and waited, and then found that deep, deep um, edge there of that end line. Not entirely sure that ball was in there from looking. I thought that the first time, too, but. And this one put away as they go middle for Caswell. So the Rebels fight back to tie it up at nine. Here is Moberg serving. Gilk dug it up at a ball handling error there against the Rebels. So kind of were surprised by that tip, I think, by Hanson. You know, nice job by Hanson. She recognized the time was a little, is off time here on that little backward slide and um, just tipped it to a, an area where, you know, there wasn't any uh, support. 
And hammered home by Caswell as the Rebels attacking from the middle. And Gilk will serve. You know, it's going to be pretty easy. She's going to win most of this if she only goes up one-on-one -on -one against a blocker here, especially when the blocker is well to her left. That one will be out as playing the serve kind of set that one up. They were always scrambling. Gilk a good server too, leading them in aces. Long run, Moberg gets there and they'll stay alive anyway. Moberg leaving it for Hansen, and that's a well-placed shot. We've seen that quite a few times from Champlin Park. It's not all about swinging as hard as you can every time. They're looking placement here. They've definitely located some nice balls, and certainly did not go max swing on most of these balls here. This one just came right down the middle, and they just noticed that the, right, the middle back was edging over to the right side. A little better timing that time, and Jillian Hansen able to hammer it home from the right side. A little, a little seed play behind the setter there and converting to a, an attack or to a termination there. And that ball's wide on the serve from Hansen. So Champlin Park back in front by two. Cop will serve. Might have been going long, but played. And the tip will drop in by Marley Hansen. Great vision by Marley Hansen. She noticed that the right back was on her heels there and kept pull, pulling back, pulling back up. She's about to swing and then kind of pulled the string on that and just dropped it over the blockers. Here's Cop to serve for the Rebels. <clears throat> Dug up nicely by Moberg, and they'll come middle again, but winning that battle with the block is Kappas. Really nice one-on-one -on -one defense by Kappas. I thought they, the middle had her, had her beat, but then she, she uh, came back in time to, to get a nice block by a solo block. Overpass there. Hansen, good hands to stay with it. And then Caswell will get the kill. Champion Park was a little fortunate there that they, they that the Bengals couldn't convert on that overpass and basically just tipped it back over to give them a Champion Park a, f a free ball and they were able to uh, run their offense. Dug up there by Tao. And ultimately leads to a blame point there as Schmidt. I put it away, Eliana Schmitz. You know, Schmitz, Schmitz deserves that kill, but I think you have to give a little credit there to that great dig by Tao down that line. That ball was coming at her. Net violation against Blaine, so score the point for Champlin Park as they went middle to Lily Reese, and the blocker got a little too much they're too close to the net and got her hand in it. And put away by Natalie Schmitz. Yeah, she started off with that nice serve receive and then converted to the, uh, uh, the kill. Great form, hits around that block, around that middle blocker. And that serve will be too long by Tao, so been, been tight all the way throughout and kind of back and forth between two, three-point leads here lately for Champlin Park. You know, the one thing Champlin Park's, or excuse me, Blaine hasn't done so well is serve. I think that's gotta be the fourth or fifth missed serve. And when you're the underdog and playing a close game, you've got to make sure that's the one part of the game you can control and get those serves in at least to test what uh, Champlin Park. Gill for the big swing. Tao digs it up. 
Back for Gilk again. Let's see, they fight the ceiling for that and cannot come up with it, so 18-14. That's really unfortunate because Thermosgaard did a great job of digging that ball. It just went high in that ceiling, and I think Blaine was ready for it to come down, but then it kind of, you know, pinballed up there. And that ball might have been coming out. I heard an out call. Marley Hansen, though, played it above her shoulders there, and it was a point for the Bengals. And I think right away she kind of was like, uh oh, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, I heard the same thing, and it was coming from the Champlain Park bench. They did their job there. Guzzi back in to serve here for the Bengals. Set it back there. Nice block by Reese. Schmidt's pushing it over. Here's Gilk. And she'll drop that one in. Good assortment of shots we've already seen from Carly here tonight. A very mature game already from a freshman. She's got all the shots right now. Rebel scramble. Gilk pushing it over. Here's Schmidt getting a full swing there and puts it away. You know, when we talked to Coach Sines, she identifies Schmitz as their kind of go-to offensive player, and already we're seeing evidence of why she is the one that they're going to rely on to have success. Just great form and good power. Another miss serve, though, for the Bengals will put Champlin Park to 20 now, 20 to 16, as Yang comes back into the lineup here for the Bengals. Good effort on the missed fire on the pass there, but it'll wind up just wide. A very aggressive serve by Gilk that had just barely over that now with a lot of pace. Another tough one here as Blaine out of system now rolled over by Eliana Schmitz. And pushed deep to the corner there, Kapitsky finding an open spot. Kapitsky did a nice job of holding to the very end. She had the right back coming up, thinking it was going to be just a tip ball over the, the block, and she saw her moving, and then she threw it to that corner and caught her off guard. And put away there by Eliana Schmitz as it was off the blocker, and I think it wound up in either way, but. So Jillian Hansen to serve here. Bengals down by five, but not out of it yet. They've played a pretty strong first set. But there's another missed serve. Boy, oh boy, for Blaine. I mean, they're right in it with, the, with Champlain Park right now. It's their serve that's missed, and I think it's got to be six now or five uh, at the very least here. And they're only trailing by six. Timeout taken by Coach Thines here for the Bengals is trying to Break the momentum a little bit and, and uh, get a little strategy going late in this set here. They have to be thinking right now that, okay, now even if they, it looks like they're probably going to drop this, they can't say we, you know, we gave them our best shot and that's it for the night. They got to be thinking now our level needs to raise up a little bit more. Yeah, I'm looking at the screen. You can see it's on Coach Thines right now. She's even, if you can read the lips, she's, she's identifying, she's raising her hand as five missed serves right now. That's exactly what's taking the momentum. Any momentum they're building, because they're hanging right in there when they're in play here, but it's the missed serves that kind of just kills the momentum and doesn't really allow you to stay any success. And, and I like to say, too, they haven't really been ones that have made Champlain Park think about playing it most for the most part they've been wide enough for long enough that that it isn't even a tough choice yeah they're not even close at this point and hopefully for the Blaine that they can uh, improve on that here's cop with the serve Schmitz with a strong swing they won't get it and the Bengals Fight on here, back to within five. You know, I've been very impressed with the two outside hitters for Blaine right now, but the two Schmitz and Schmitz right now, and they've had a number of attempts and very successful. That seems to be their strength of this, uh, their offense. Thormans guard with the serve. And we had a net violation against Blaine, so it was going to be a kill either way. Yeah, but they uh, they'll get the 24th point up. They called the net on the, the middle blocker there, Ella Kappas. 
Caswell serving here for Champlin Park, and that's too long. And she wanted to end it with something <laughs> special there and got too much. So uh, Eliana Schmidt serving here for Blaine. And come right side to Hansen. Ooh, that ball might have been headed out, but played. And then a nice setter dump by Kopp will win the first set here for Champlin Park as they pull out a 25 to 19 victory. Blaine was tough early and had the lead for a while, but the Rebels end up prevailing in part because of Blaine's service trouble. One set in the books. We'll be back with set number two here on CCX Sports. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, do a spot on this last one. There it is. You gone with it. Leo. <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure love. And welcome back here to Champlin Park High School. Thanks for joining us for volleyball here on CCX Champlin Park. It wasn't easy, but they ended up pulling out that first set over Blaine, 25 to 19. Bengals had some leads through the first half of the set, and you don't want to dwell on it too much, but certainly, as we said, the serving is really kind of what did them in. It, it sure was, but I think, you know, you got to move on. I'm sure that's what Coach Hines is going to tell them and told them in the, in the huddle. Hey, look, we played with them. If it weren't for those serves, we'd be even a lot closer. We just got to fix that and continue to do the, the good things we've been doing here. And I expect that will improve here, and I think Champion Park will uh, be even more tested this game. Thormans guard serving here to begin set two. Gilk will get a swing, and there's lack of talk there for the Rebels as Pau stepped in front of Schmitz, and they nearly collide. I think, nothing. I think that ball was definitely intense for Schmitz and she was all over it. I think Tao just kind of stepped to her side and probably got in front of it and deflected that off. Fought off there by Axness. And that one was into the tape. So fourth hit called there against Champlin Park. It'll be Blaine served with Eliana Schmitz. And Coach Yunker giving some rather heated instruction to his girls there. <laughs> and put away there by Brown. You know, in that first game, Champion Park had a number of kills down the middle in the back middle back position. It looks like it looks like Blaine is starting to make that adjustment. They're moving their middle back closer to the middle, and that's what happened at that last point where they were able to dig that up and, and then run an uh, insistent ball. Marley Hansen off the block. Schmitz tried to dig it up, but it just hung up on top of the net there and unable to play it, so we're even at two. Cop serving here, and that one is way long. I always kind of wonder how it affects serving when it's these kind of really big gyms that don't have like a wall that's, you know, just a little ways behind the court or whatnot. For some players, it definitely messes with that depth perception there. And there was a, a right there was a uh, little miscommunication. Uh, between the two players, the right back and the middle back players. Kappas looking for another ace here. Kopp did a pretty good job with that one, but then the hit is too long from Caswell. Yeah, Kopp did a nice job saving that tight pass, allowed Caswell to take a full swing in system, just a little too deep. Yeah. 
And that one put home by Ellie Schmidt for Champlin Park as they pull within 5-3. Caswell will serve now for Champlin Park. Overpass there, but then Cop stays with it. Here's Hansen a swing dug up by Thormansgard. And nice block there as Schmitz was denied and Rebels to within one. You know, um, Schmitz had a great run and attack on that ball, but I mean, uh, Ella Schmidt was all over that with that block. And put away there by Jillian Hansen, so the Bengals up 6-4. Nice play by Jillian Hansen be, to be available and be ready for that, to attack that ball, to take that advantage of that one-on-one -on -one situation. Guzzi will serve. And the kill there by Schmidt as the block didn't quite close on that one. So Marley Hansen to serve now for the Rebels, looking to even it up here in set two. Cross court for Schmidt. And well placed there by Reese Axness, getting a rotation as a hitter here. You know, it's kind of odd. Reese just came in that last substitution in the front right position here. Normally, they either come in the left front or the or the service position here. And I think she is the uh, the uh, second setter on yeah. this team as well too. So it's kind of you know that's outside of the box thinking as what we talked about with Coach Junker. Yeah. That ball was good as Hansen finds an opening cross court. Yeah, and it gets back to what you said earlier. Sometimes about you just gotta try and figure out ways to get you know your best six on the court. Rebels, second time they've had some trouble communicating on the serve there, and that's you know you you're hoping by this point in the season that that's not happening quite the way it did to those two. Credit to Blaine, they are serving right through the seam there, so it can be anybody's point or anybody's serve receive ball. So it's kind of confused them a little bit, but great job recovering by uh, Champlin Park there and getting that kill. Gilk hitting from the middle, and even though there are two blocks on that, still able to convert. Axness serving here for Champlin Park. They trail it by one. Oops, gonna try again there. And a kill for Eliana Schmidt for Blaine. Great job of Eliana using the hands of the blocker, hitting high on that, so it deflects high out of the court. Tao will serve here for the Bengals. Great dig. Wow. Another swing at it here, and that one's gonna land out. So Kapitsky getting the job done there again. Good. Again, one of those change of pace attacks. Great dig by Tao, but then be able to convert it again and, and mixing it up down that line. Pass into the net, no way to handle that one, and another jump. Eliana Schmitz isn't the biggest left side you'll ever find, but boy, she's been effective. She's been very effective. She is an, actually, an, she's not that tall, but she can jump, and she's got a strong arm on her. And off the ceiling, they'll <laughs> stay with it. Now going to the outside, and a nice double block, and that'll be a point for the Rebels. All handling error there. So Gilk will serve here for Champlin Park. And that one winds up out. 
You know, Claire Brown usually is a right side hitter, but in that rotation, they have her hit one on the left side, and she, I think that's they've gone her three or four times, and she's converted almost, I think, every time so far. So that just shows her versatility along that front line. Eliana Schmidt serving, and it is out. Well, at least that one was close. Yes. And from our vantage point, it looked like it could have even been in, but. And I believe that's only the first missed serve that they've had this game. So whatever the coach was telling him in the... Yeah. Okay, it was out. It was out. Hop with the serve. And there's Natalie Schmitz smoking at home. They ran Schmitz out of the middle on the, off the serve receive and an in-system ball here. They also had the, the right side running a little bit of a slide. Just converting, even though there were three blockers on, Schmitz was still able to get it over that, those blockers for the kill. Yeah, and the Rebels a little miscommunication on serve receive there. Cross court with it, let's see, was there a touch? No, gonna be a point for Champlain Park as Brown Tried to really cut that one hard. Yeah, it was a good idea by Brown. I think had she been able to find that court, it definitely would have been uh, a, a, a kill. And nice double block put up to deny Brown there. Yeah, great job by Hanson and, and Reese there on, on Brown. They anticipated that set was going to go out there. They knew that she was going to go cross, and they took away that line. Here's Hanson a swing. It's blocked there by Reese. Another opportunity for the Bengals, but now Hanson will come back and misfire there. Didn't have her footwork quite set there. It didn't look too smooth on the approach. I think she had a little issues with the transition there, and I think she got caught kind of flat-footed, and the timing was off, and uh, certainly wasn't to elevate like she normally would. Guzzi to serve here for Blaine. Hansen with the tip and caught the blockers on the way down there. Hansen with the tip and the dig by Hansen on Blaine. Unfortunately, it was too much of a, uh, a wild pad dig there that uh, and it didn't found the, uh, the court. Long run to get it. Guzzi stays with it. And they will get it over. That one actually turned into kind of a tough one. Tao digging it up. Here's Schmitz. Hop was in good position to get that one. Now Gilk tipping. Tao though read it. And put away by Natalie Schmitz for Blaine. You know, major props to Alessandra Tao. I'm not just on that play. She made a couple great digs, but throughout the whole game, she's anticipating every ball. It seems to be right where every ball is going to be. Make some great digs and saves, and allowing her team to get in system. And a good pass right there. Set her dump, but Cop slides to get it. Now Gilk puts that one home. That time, Gilk kind of switched it up a little bit and went to the 1-6 seam. Um, you know, they, it looks like Blaine had been sh favoring that middle now because that's where they had some success, and now she's made the adjustment. Long run for Thormansgaard. They'll send a free ball over here. Here's Gilk. And they fight that one off. And nice block by Hansen. And a net violation eventually, though, on the Bengals will score the point for Champlin Park. They call the net on Thermos Guard there. Great defense on Blaine, you know, to save some, to keep some balls alive. But I think Champlin was just too much firepower on that point. Axness the serve. Axness will set it for Gilk and goes with the tip again and drops it in. I like how Gilk just keeps just uh, changing it up here. One, one ball, she's going to smoke that ball. The other one, she sees a little cord, a little opening, just like this past point here, and just kind of tip it over. That takes quite a bit of, 
of, of, of talent. Block was late, score the kill for Jillian Hansen. Blaine keeps on fighting, Tao will serve now. Axness fought it off. Cross court, Tao, great effort. Can't get to it as Kapitsky sending it way across court. Great effort by Tao. I'm not sure that ball would have was coming was gonna stay in that court though, but great effort nonetheless. Here's Moberg to serve. Her team up by two. And it'll be an ace. That serve had so much sink by the time it crossed that uh, net. Excellent serve. Champlin Park trying to do what they did late in the first set and just kind of go over like two for one and just <laughs> eventually pull away. Axness, tough ball to set there, just out. Yeah, Axness did a great job of saving it. Um, and I thought they were going to be able to convert. It looks like they had caught uh, Blaine off guard, the middle there. It just went a little too deep. Thormans guard will serve with her team down by two. Tau, another nice pass there. Good block, and then the joust at the net one by Gilk after Caswell had blocked the previous one. Great anticipation by Gilk for that joust, and you can just see the strength. She knew that play was just gonna, that ball was just gonna come right in top, in the middle of that net, and was totally ready for that, and then be able to swipe it away from where that middle blocker on the other side. Bengals stay with it and get it over. And pounded home there. Looked like there was a net violation anyway, but uh, Caswell put it home. 20 to 16, Rebels. Yeah, really nice swing by Caswell. Even though there was a, a tough double block on her, she went around the double block on the right side. Nice dig there by Gilk. Moberg will send it over now to Hansen with the tip. Rebels have read things pretty well on a, and not just one or two players too, a variety. They must have scouted this team, uh, Blaine, uh, some, some bit here because they've got a number of points on that little soft tip over that right side blocker, excuse me, their left side blocker. That's gotta be a fifth or sixth point they've gotten uh, on that play. Timeout taken here by Blaine. As you see, they caught the, uh, you're gonna see that the left back was a little too deep as the attacker was about to swing, and then she saw the opening right there. Kept it inside that 10 foot, tough ball to dig up. You know, part of that is being set up from what's occurred so far in this game here where that Hitters, but they've been pounding that line, pounding that line, and pinning them back. And so now they're anticipating that's going to come back at them again. And so their momentum's kind of falling backwards. And then when you do that, you know, that off-speed ball, that change-up, you're not anticipating it. It makes it so hard to dig that ball up. Gilk will serve here for the Rebels. And that one's going to be too long. So as coming out of the timeout, you feel like, okay, we jinxed them. Whether that's really the case or not, it always feels that way, doesn't it? It always seems that way out of a timeout. I bet some more miss serves happen out of the timeout. Eliana Schmitz to serve here for the Bengals. They're in a similar spot to where they were in the first set, where they just no more margin for error. And nice double block there as Caswell getting most of that one for the Rebels, and they are up five again. You know, Blaine had everything going for them there. They, they served aggressively, took uh, Champions Park out of system, got a free ball basically, and was able to run a, b a ball in system, had an attack. 
Champlain Park was just too tough on that block. Allison Kopp serving. And Schmidt will put another one away. She, you can tell she kind of wants that ball in her direction, and that's what you want to see, somebody who's confident and aggressive out there. It's definitely true. I mean, she's had a lot of success, and right now the rotation for uh, Blaine is probably their best offensive set with Schmidt on one side and Brown on the other. Let's see if they can convert. Come back to her again there. Cop digs it up. And that one put away by Ellie Schmidt for Champlain Park. Schmidt was able to get that kill off that deflected ball off that block just right in front of the middle back player. Come right side with it this time. Back out to Hansen off the block. And middle tipped by Hansen, but read by Schmidt. And that ball was wide of the antenna, so a point for Champlain Park. Tough set that took Schmidt outside the antenna. There wasn't much she could do unless she tried to do a hard cut, but that would have been a hard ball to do. She tried to go down that line. Uh, unfortunately for her, it was just outside the antenna. Overpass here, see if the Rebels can put it away. Here's Hansen off the block. Schmidt's reach for it. And it is point number 25 up for Champlain Park as they win the second set, 25 to 18. We will come back with the third here. Rebels take the first two by similar scores here over the Bengals. First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> Leading down to the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need not see. What do you think? I know this road mm. is there for me. If I'm really free, take me down to the river and walk. We had to set number three here, Champlain Park. Neither one of them were easy, but they end up winning the first two sets over Blaine. We'll see if the Bengals can bounce back here and try and uh, extend this one here in the third. You know, between the first and second set, we talked about if Blaine could just clean up the serves. You know, they missed about five or six in that first set there. We thought that really contributed to their loss. They certainly did that in the second. I think I unofficially, I think they only missed one. I think ultimately at the end though, I think Champlain Park did just a better job of locating their balls. A few tip balls that they found off of an attack. Um, you know, Blaine still played really good defense, but um, you know, I think they just, Champlain just had them off on their, on their heels and trying to figure out what the heck are these attackers gonna do. Moberg with the serve here for Champlain Park to begin our third set. And solid block put up there. Most of the time Eliana Schmitz has gotten a swing. They've wound up scoring it, but not that time. I think Gilk did a really nice job of containing that block and setting that wall. On the line, and that one, let's see, was it good? Yep. Yes, it was. As Clara Brown gets the kill there for the Bengals. The line judge could not see it, indicates she couldn't see it, but I think the, the R1 and the R2 both saw that it was in bounds. Yeah, it was coming right at the line judge here. She had to back up, and yeah, I think it was in. Yep, definitely a good call by the two referee, the officials. Gil, that time, had it denied. Good coverage behind her though and Schmitz will put it away Natalie Schmitz yeah give credit to Ella Kappas there for anticipating this tip by Gilk and then allowing that getting a free ball and then and then having Schmitz finish that uh, point for him Brown with the serve 
They set it middle there, and there was a net violation regardless. That's another thing, right, Blaine? Once, you know, you'd like your blockers to be aggressive, but they're, they're starting to, you know, sure that one was going to be a point anyway, but there's, that could cost them some key points yeah. if they, you know, keep committing net violations. Well, they definitely need to clean that up if they want to compete, especially if they're going to compete against teams of the caliber of, of Champlain Park here. Um, yes, while, the, while those net calls have been, have resulted already in points for the opponent, but, you know, they're going to want to need, they're going to need to clean that up. Schmitz just missing the line there, and so it's four to two Rebels. Gill quit the serve. Oops, and a serving error for her. We'll give it back to Blaine. You know, she's been serving aggressively all night and had a lot of success. The, the, the points, I mean, the, the, the serves have barely been over that net. That time, not enough to get over that tape. Kappa serving here for Blaine. And Hansen will get it done there. Camplin Park, I would say, probably not going to get an A grade for their serve receive here tonight. There have been quite a few times when either they've collided or just not gotten a very good first pass up. You know, and, and you're right, and you know, but give them credit for recovering and still converting points out of uh, out of system balls, like in that situation. Top with the serve there. Eliana Schmitz will get it done again for Blaine, hitting from the right side that time. So one of the adjustments they made now was put Eliana Schmitz. I think they started doing that in the second set, their midway the second set, where they moved Schmitz over to the right side. She had started this game on the left side. She looks like she's still having the same amount of success on that side. Tau digs at <laughs> Schmitz, had to spin around to stay with it. Top coming middle, and that one is pounded home by Caswell. You know, one thing I, I think when Coach Junker told us at the beginning, they're a pretty balanced team, and we'll certainly see that on the offensive side. They've had a pretty even distribution of attacks by all three front row positions. You know, I think we've seen a number of attacks from the middle, but also from the two pins as well, too. So that's going to be a tough team to stop, off, uh, you know, defensively if you don't know that they don't have any tendencies as to which position they're going to go to all the time. You can't really just, you know, uh, fa or favor one side. Nice block there, but the Rebels stay with it. Then the center dump. Here's Hansen getting a swing, and let's see, that one was out. You know, great idea by Hansen. She did, couldn't get a lot of pace on this ball, but right before she hit it, she looked down that line and saw an opening and tried to whip it down there. It hit the tape, and then it, that deflected and caused it to go out further out. Hansen chipping again, and <laughs> she's been so successful with that. They've had so much success just tipping over that left side block. It's got to be the eighth or ninth point already in this match. Hansen misfired trying to go down the line with that one. And Marley Hansen, I have to remind myself, we got a Hansen <laughs> doing a lot of things for each team here. We've got a lot of Hansen and a lot of Schmitz. Yes. Yeah, and then, and then there's two and a Schmitzes Schmitz. yeah. and a Schmidt <laughs> right. on the opposing teams, too. Long run for Thormitzgaard. Top coming out to Gilk. Dug up, though, by Tau. Top with a nice dig there. Push to the corner, Schmitz a diving play on that ball. Hard to tell if it's gonna be in or not. And ultimately a lead to a point and they're fired up. Really, really great recognition by Claire Brown here to see, basically give Champ Park a taste of their own mess. And they've had a lot of success already on this, in this match. And Claire sees that opening, just pushes that ball to that deep corner. Oh 
And Kopp will score with the setter dump there. That previous point, too, I think it really showed Natalie Schmitz the fire. Chase that ball down. It was possible it was going to go up, but she was taking no chances and ended up actually getting a really nice pass for one-handed attempt. And that one's going to be deep. They stayed with it, and I was surprised they kept it up, but got the push shot going deep. Axness the serve. And smoked home there by Clara Brown. Nice swing by Clara Brown, set up by a really nice pass off of a tough serve. She's starting to see some success down that line. It's not much of a seam. You know, it's maybe two, three feet just to the right of Gilk, but she's finding it. Here's Gilk on the run. And put away nicely there by Reese as it started with a pretty good pass from Hansen. And this is where that versatility of Champion Park is really favoring right now. Blake can't just stack a defense right now on one particular here. They're distributing from all over the uh, three positions on the front row. Makes it tough to double block them. And another kill from the middle there for Claire Caswell. You're starting to see Champlin starting to pull a little bit, you know, take that momentum and see if they can pull, pull away here. They're starting to find an offensive groove. And misfire there by Addison Kapitsky. So Brown will serve here for the Bengals. They try and stay in this one, down by three points and trailing two sets to, to zero. And Gilk will get another kill there. That wasn't an easy ball for a left-hander. She kind of really had to rotate her body and didn't probably get as far rotated as she wanted to. Yeah, there. it certainly took her outside of where she normally likes to hit that ball, and she kind of did a nice cut. And you know, she didn't have a lot of pace on it, but it was all about location for her there. Moberg coming back for Hansen for the tip. Tao, a dig, and, and a little hesitation by Moberg there. Tao is very fortunate to dig that ball up, and it's it basically give Champion Park a free ball, but Champion Park just wasn't ready for that free ball, wasn't anticipated in miscommunication as two was going to take that first ball, and then the second ball, too. Hansen with the first swing and then the overpass she puts away. A nice job of finding that opening on that over for the overpass for Hansen. I like that she didn't get too over eager here and yeah. commit a net violation yeah. either because you certainly could see that on that type of ball. That's right. Cop with the serve and that's an ace. Schmitz might have been called off that or maybe on her own thought. But actually, it was in by quite a bit. So we're getting our first look at the middle blocker, Zoe Smith, here. Let's see if she can help them gain some of the momentum. Go with the floater. Let's dig there, and then a misfire by Hansen. It'll be Eliana Schmitz to serve here for the Bengals. Top chases it down. The tip there by Smith. And then put away by Ellie Schmidt. A little unfortunate by Schmidt. She made a nice dig. It's just a little bit too wild on that one. Sent in the back where all the players were kind of retreating or running in towards that net. The ball went away and towards the end line. Caswell with the serve, and that'll be another ace. It landed actually on the foot, I think, of Yang, so it was 
Going to be good anyway. It looked like it was right on the line. Top for Hansen and finds the opening again down the line. Tao lunging got to it but couldn't keep it alive. Now this whole team, this whole cha Champlain Park team has done a really nice job of just mixing it up in terms of pace and the location. They're getting a, probably you know, at least a third of their points just on tip balls or balls that they don't have to use uh, max swing. And that time they get a max swing after a good recovery after the joust at the net. It looked like it was going to be Lane's point there. That was a heck of a save to keep that ball alive. Yeah, Cop did a great job of keeping it alive and then giving it a nice set. And there's a kill for Smith. Putting it away for the Bengals. Natalie Schmitz will serve here for Blaine. Her team down by seven, though. Hanson had that one denied by Smith. Here's Brown getting a swing. Back now for Hanson. And they stay with it. Oh, wow, got it over. Another chance for Hansen. Good long point here, and the Rebels take it. Lily Reese puts it away for Champlain Park, and that one sort of feels like the, maybe the nail in the yeah. coffin a little bit there. They win that long point. Yeah, and she was definitely challenged by Blaine. They threw three blockers up on her, and she was still able to find a way to hit through those blocks and convert for the kill. Time out here with a 20 to 12 Champlain Park lead as they try and finish Blaine off for a sweep. Yeah, you do get that sense that Champlain Park now has put a little bit of in cruise control. They're starting to, you know, they're starting to get in that rhythm here, they, which I think started back in that middle of that second set here. And, you know, hopefully Blaine can rebound from this. It's, there's still game left, and they are competitors here as they prove the first, you know, several sets already. Let's see if they can, can uh, make one final run at this. Both teams have, uh, you know, pretty quality opponents coming up in their uh, conference matches resuming on, on Monday as Blaine will be at Andover and Champlain Park will be here to take on Maple Grove. Yeah, both opponents for each either team are going to compete for that conference uh, uh, title and uh, very good programs. Here's Brown, had it denied. I think Champion Park not only are, are winning points with their offense now in the last set or so, they're also getting a number of blocks um, and, and kind of, you know, stifling the, the attackers on, on the Blaine. Overpass there by Schmitz, but then Kopp had to stay with that one. Smith, a swing, fought off there, but... Moberg kind of lost her fundamentals a little bit with that <laughs> stab at it. Tao will serve here for the Bengals. And Hansen with a misfire on the pass there. A lot of movement on that ball there by Tao making that service a pretty difficult task for Hansen. And that'll be an ace. Again, right between the seams of that six and one position. Little bit of miscommunication as to who was going to take it. And a great deep serve. And this time tried to cross him up by going short, but instead into the net. It's a good idea, because I think they would have gotten him there, because they were definitely anticipating a deeper serve like the previous one. Barely, barely uh, didn't make it. Reese Axness to serve. 
And dumped to the middle, an awful lot of space open there. Yeah, put it right over the campfire, just passed just in front of the middle back player. Nice job of hiding it to the very last second and not allowing them to react quickly. Kappas getting that kill. And here's the swing put away for Reese. Sarah Moberg will serve now for the Rebels, two points away from winning this set and winning the match. Nice That's serve. an ace there. Yeah, nice serve by Moberg with a lot of movement, a lot of drop on it, tough to handle. See if she can do it again here and try and close them out. Pass tight to the net, but a big swing there by Kappas. Tau going outside for Brown, Great. dug up by Moberg. And now Gilt for the tip. Tau, though, gets there. And go again with the tip, and that one missed. Good idea, good idea by the middle. It would have been uh, open had that landed inside the court. Brown with the serve. Hanson a big swing, but it's dug up. Now here's Schmitz, and it's blocked. Caswell denies her on that match point, and Champlin Park will end up indeed getting the sweep. 25 to 17. You could kind of feel in that third set, they were just sort of playing it. It felt like they were they had given it their best shot, but it just wasn't going to happen at that point. Yeah, I think they it played, it seemed like they were able to recover after the momentum shifted over there and couldn't make a run. And frankly, give credit to Champion Park. I think they stepped up their defense, particularly the front row defense, and, and started frustrating uh, Bengals hitters. Uh, they weren't finding it nearly as easy to attack that ball as they did in the first set and a half or so. And so credit to Champion Park. Uh, Coach Yonker definitely has his team in the right direction. Uh, they played a very tough first half of the schedule. Now it's winning conference, but more importantly for him, making sure this team's in a great position as they make a run through sectionals. So it is the first loss for Blaine tonight, but uh, I think definitely the best opponent they've played so far. And, and for the most part, they did some good things in this one. If they play the way they did tonight, there'll be a lot of teams on their schedule that they'll be able to beat. So try and learn from the, the loss here in Champlain Park. Obviously, some still some things for them to work on, too, but they get the victory their 10th of the season. Hope you've enjoyed the match here tonight from Champlain Park. The Rebels winning it in three straight over Blaine, 25, 19, 18, and 17. Good night from Champlain Park.